everybody, welcome to uh, Matt and Will's first uh, spectacular horror movie reviews. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we're, I guess we're going to pump out a couple of these this month. Uh, yeah. We're going to start with Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Honestly, when we were kicking this around and you were like, let's do Halloween, I was like, good lord, when was the last time I really sat down and watched it the whole way through? Right. Uh, it wasn't like on AMC, like hacked to pieces with editing and... And, and everything and cutting stuff out of it and uh <laughs> it, so it's been a long time um yeah but there were there were a few things i did a little bit of research um building up to this uh there's a another podcast out there called classic horror cast oh, i actually okay. listened to their review uh and they talked a lot about the uh the series and the uh this movie in particular yeah and um, one of the things that I learned that I had no idea is uh, Donald Pleasance, who plays uh, Dr. Loomis. Dr. Um, Sam Lewis. Uh, Loomis. Loomis. One of the main uh, protagonists of the series. Um, Basically, the, after two, he was the series saving grace because yeah. they didn't have any good yeah. <laughs> He was, originally when they were putting this together, they wanted either Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee to play Dr. Ooh. Loomis's character. But because of budgets and stuff like that, they basically just went for Donald Pleasance, who at the time was pretty much known for doing character bit roles in, in stuff, a lot of stuff in, in, in England, yeah, yeah. on TV and stuff. And he actually, probably one of my favorite parts of this film uh, were the scenes with him in it. Because yeah. like, and his line, uh, I, just, I know I'm jumping ahead here, but the line yeah, where yeah. They, they're like, well, you know, he can't get far. How did he, you know, learn how to drive? Well, he was doing pretty good last night. Like I just <laughs> throws his coat in the I car. I just absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I just feel like that wouldn't have been delivered as well by like Christopher no. Lee. <laughs> no. It was, and they they knew what they had in their hands too. Because, and this again is like kind of jumping forward. There was like he had two what I call like speeches mm -hmm. that he gave in the film. Because like the first one where he's like, you know, I spent. 12 years trying to learn about him and then another seven trying to lock him up and hide him away. And it's just like, there was that one. And then he was talking about how like he saw the deadness in his eyes and everything like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't think Lee would have been able to like, I I've seen a video of Lee talking about things in droll tone in his life and it wasn't very entertaining. No, no, <laughs> but, but anyway, I guess we should kind of rewind back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll start from the top. Start from the top. Um, so this was filmed, I think it was like in 76, 77. It came out in 77. Yeah, October 25th, 1977 was when uh, it hit theaters and it exploded. It mm. And they, they, the, the theater didn't really think it was going to do that well, like the, the production company and everything, because its budget was only like $300,000. And it kind of shows. I mean, like... Sure. I had suspicions to myself, like, scenes where they have kids trick-or-treating, which is, like, immediately after school lets out. <laughs> like, yeah. I I'm mean, like, like, I wonder if they didn't get clearance to film kids out at night or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, but it, it, for what they did with it, though, it was a fantastic movie. And it's probably, it's the movie that's basically given the credit for where slasher films went from then on out. Right. Like, the 80s slasher, like, it. It developed a lot of slasher film tropes. People often credit this, along with um, at this at this time period, obviously Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Um, but also Black Christmas also kind of helped create like, some of these tropes at the yeah, time. Yeah, it was like one of the original. Yeah, I, when you're thinking sorts. like slasher films, you're thinking that's probably your like the the original three was yeah. and like black christmas nobody really talks about but um <laughs> well i mean in all honesty it didn't really get a good enough like reprisal <laughs> like in the early 2000s when they did that remake well honestly yeah. neither did this but uh, <laughs> and, 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 anyway Looking at you, the Rob. film the film opens up uh interestingly enough like you're not you don't even see like who you who you're in you're behind the the eyes of this you're behind the eyes of what is, like, a six-foot-tall cameraman portraying yeah, yeah. a four-foot-tall child. There's, like, even a part where uh, the kid, like, reaches down to grab the mask he's going to put on, and it's like, you can totally tell it's a kid off-screen reaching down to get it. Because, like, either that or that arm is, like, 20 feet long because it, it just doesn't look right <laughs> at all. And, you know, perspective scenes 
you know, where the kid's eye level is as they're mm-hmm. doing the POV shot, mm-hmm. it's, like, way up here. There's, like, the banister to the doors or, like, down here around, like, chest level. Mm-hmm. And it, it's funny. And then you get the first kill where it's him going, killing his sister. Yeah. And he's stabbing her. All the while, just looking at his hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, really? Come on now with this. This is really lame. You know? I was like, I, I, I don't know if you were deciding you needed that shot to show me what you were stabbing her with, even though you made it clear that it was a knife out of the kitchen drawer. Yeah. But yeah, it, that was silly. And then the other part that gets me is, like, the kid leaves the house... It's like immediately after he's done stabbing, it kind of like fades to black, and then you hear like Michael. It's his dad yeah, like yeah, takes the mask yeah. off, and they're just standing there like looking at the kid. Yeah, as it, the camera pans away, and I'm like, "Go in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to call an ambulance." Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like two minutes of just silent, awkward stares. Yeah. Michael, where'd you get a bloody knife? Yeah, I don't remember leaving a bloody knife laying around. Not the best opener. No. <laughs> no. Not the best opener to a Pretty ambitious movie. to go POV shot right off the bat, mm-hmm. but... Which the series in the sequel, which I also thought was a really good movie as well, they, mm. they used the POV a lot in that one, too. Sure. I think it worked better in that one. But, uh, you know, after that, then we get introduced to Dr. Loomis, the probably the best character, besides Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Laurie Strode. Strode. She was probably the second strongest actor in the entire film. Her first film. In all honesty. Yeah. Her first. A lot of, you know, and that's funny, like, you think about, you got her, you got the Kevin Bacon, you got the Johnny Depp, all died. <laughs> well, not, she didn't. She was the she, only one that made she it. She didn't, yeah. She, she lasted a while in the series. Yeah, until, until like, they she got decided to, she didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> well, it was that H2O Resurrection where she's just like, please kill my character. I think it was H, I think it was <laughs> Halloween Water uh, yeah. that uh, they like, were finally please like... Please kill my character. No, no, no. In, uh, in Halloween Water, she decapitates him. Oh, that's right. So it's beginning right. of Resurrection because yeah. I guess she's reading the script. She's like, Busta Who is in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, Busta Rhymes. Kill my character, please. She didn't really want to be involved any further. Kind of like how Harrison Ford didn't really want to be involved in Star Wars going forward. It's a good just, choice. Like, you know, <laughs> just uh, end it now, please. But, so, yeah, then we, you know, we go, we have Dr. Loomis. He's on his way to, and this is what I never really understood. He's on his way to the mental ward that mm-hmm. Michael's being kept at, but he's mm-hmm. his doctor, and he's coming from a different hospital, because he's with a nurse mm-hmm. from another, I guess, where they're going to transport him. The nurse with an awesome cape. Yeah. yeah. She's like, I've never done this kind of thing before. I, You know, the their ramblings is what gets to me the worst. He's like, he hasn't spoken a word in over 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're a terrible doctor, then. <laughs> You didn't do well, too hot. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, of course, it's, it's like dark and stormy, too. Yeah. Kind of cliche there a little bit, driving around in there. Uh, I don't even know what it was kind like, of station it was a, wagon yeah, that was. Station wagon was just the logo of the hospital plastered yeah, all yeah. over the damn thing. <laughs> so they get there, and of course, there's just patients, which I feel terrible for these extras, because it's just pouring down rain. And they're just walking around in nothing but a fucking, like, nightgown. And she's, she utters one of the, like, my favorite lines of the film. They just let them run around like that? Yeah, like, like, you, you yeah, damn well no. know. They t- I'm pretty sure that something's going on here. Uh, and then the best line, like, because of, you know, he gets out of the car, and mm-hmm. she's just in there with it idling. Then you see, uh, I, it's Michael. I call him Mankind, because he just, like, the way his, the way his hair was and everything... He jumps up in front on top of the car. She gets scared and runs. He gets in, not knowing how a car operates at all in his life, <laughs> gets in and perfectly speeds away to freedom. <laughs> and which then Donald Pleasance gives like the best line in the movie where it's like, the evil, the evil is gone from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then it's just like Haddonfield. <laughs> 15 years later. Yeah. Well, it wasn't 15 years No, later. this was, yeah. It was 15 years after he killed his sister, but. Yeah, I just think it, that was great. And then, like, the joke I was going to make a lot if we did, like, a different kind of, uh, like, a different kind of movie review was, like, there are many scenes where Jason's just hiding in the bushes, like, beaten off to Laura Strode walking around. Because <laughs> you can't just help but make that joke because he's just, like, there's how many times there's, like, head bu- like a head of mm-hmm. bushes, and he's just, like, peeking out, and then you hear, like, the... <sighs> 
<sighs> yeah. Like, and they did that with everything. Like, a lot of the deep, heavy breathing, which I guess was, like, at the time, it might have been kind of sinister sounding, but, like, you watch it nowadays, and you're like, this is kind of hilarious. Yeah, this is, like, one of those <laughs> calls like, I hang up on, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, that was like one of my jokes to the whole thing. I'm like, there's like three instances, like in the very beginning too, because she's like walking away, she's like singing the song, like oh, I wish the two of us could be together. And he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's breaking Megan's law later on in the film, yeah. driving around the elementary yeah. school, creeping kids he's out, kind of creeping around in his, in his hospital station wagon, just yep. kind of cruising. Yep. POV shot watching Tommy. <laughs> right after, mind you, <laughs> Rob Zombie gets all the audio for the rest of his songs in the late 90s. <laughs> He's gonna get you! He's gonna get you! <laughs> oh, the boogeyman. Yeah. So I have a, I have a question for you. There's a scene where okay. um, after she thinks she sees him behind the bush and she goes in the house mm -hmm. and she goes upstairs and she sees him I know exactly out the window. Right. Okay. <laughs> And he's, like, out there, like, behind the clothesline with sheets, yeah. kind of just there. And then, like, looks again, and he's not there. Did she actually see him? Was he actually there? Because if he was, see, he I don't know, because <laughs> because of that entire shot, she didn't look away. Yeah. So there would have had to have been, like, that it awkward was just moment the camera just, like, that looked away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh, well, I didn't really have a plan for this. I was hoping you'd look away. Well, yeah. Uh, I'll just kind of shimmy over. Yeah. <laughs> I, but you know and that's the funny thing though like as funny as some of those shots are they work for this because mm -hmm. in other horror movies like that where you have a slasher it's like you hardly see them mm -hmm. and this one he's he's literally all over the place you know like mm -hmm. it it works for what it was and like they they gave him the jumpsuit which is something that also became you know like a lot of horror characters down the road like you know, Jason, basically, he took that on. He got, like, the fucking right. Dickies jumpsuit from a mechanic <laughs> right, and right. killed people with Carhartt, it. Carhartt, uh... Yeah. Which, overalls, speaking yeah. of that, I also find that really funny. Like, when Donald Pleasance is on his way to Haddonfield, mm -hmm. he stops at that phone booth that just happens to be ten feet away from where Jason murdered a mechanic <laughs> yeah. and stripped him naked, yeah. stole his fucking <laughs> jumper, and, like, left the truck there. <laughs> Because that's what I also don't get. It's like, if, if you're leaving <laughs> to go somewhere to start murdering a bunch of people, you you, you wouldn't ditch the insane asylum yeah, car with the plastic. Yeah, you, you would dill, uh, uh, dill. You would ditch the uh, Illinois State Hospital yeah. uh, station wagon. Uh, you know, and take the guy's truck. I mean, you took his clothes. Why would you took you his clothes and you left his Sanford Son truck behind? Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's hilarious to me. But, yeah, so then there's that, and then we then eventually meet the other, uh, what I was what I was going to call the uh, murder meet for the movie. Uh, you meet the other two girls that Jamie, <laughs> I don't know why she's even friends with. I was thinking that, too. I'm like, she hates are, both of them. These are such <laughs> irredeemable characters. Like, yeah, you meet Linda nothing... the retard. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then Andy the bitch. That's basically yeah, what you got. Yeah, pretty much. And I love the scene with her. They're walking together after school. Mm -hmm. Jason's <laughs> he's a, he's in his his uh, mental mental car. Yeah, he comes around the corner real nice and slow, like yeah. too. And then she's just like, "Speed kills asshole!" And he just like slams <laughs> on the brakes. Like he wasn't even speeding. No, no. Maybe he was going thirty in a twenty-five, and like, she just. I, I I hate guys that drive well, she cars that can't uh, take a joke. <laughs> she is the uh, sheriff's daughter, so maybe yeah. she's just like. Yeah, she's trying to uphold the law yeah. as much as she can. Yeah, as she's smoking pot. Um, I hate guys that drive that can't take a joke. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> it's like they were making up their own lines. It really was. It was like, Andy, you're gonna get us killed one oh, day. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and it's you know, it's like, I, and I get it. Like Laurie Strode's the bookworm, and they made sure to ram that home too because they're like, they're walking. It's like, oh, I left my book back at school. And it's like, oh, I like books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then like later, she's like, oh, but I guess I'm too smart because I read too much. You know, I'm like, I get it. I get yeah. it. It was if if you wearing those white pantyhose weren't enough to tell me you were a dork. <laughs> Please tell me about how much you read books. 
So yeah, you get that, and the whole th- the whole time they're just basically walking, pouring out gallons of exposition of what's going to happen later. And I like, oh, I'm gonna babysit some kids. Oh, I brought this pumpkin. I thought we'd carve a jack o' lantern because I'm yeah. babysitting kids tonight. Yeah. And then the other two are like, I'm gonna bang my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically, I thought, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's and that you know and that formula worked for another twenty five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was there were a couple of things that didn't make much sense to me. There's the scene where they pull up outside the store, like a general hardware oh, the, store the dad, and stuff. Yeah, the her and sheriff like, dad. Yeah, it must have been some kids and stuff like that. I guess you're supposed to think that was Jason, but Michael. Oh yeah, Michael. Uh, <laughs> no, trust was, me. When I was writing yeah, down notes, yeah. I wrote Jason how many times? <laughs> you, you're supposed to think that's Michael, but he's already there and already wearing the mask. Yeah. So unless the timelines kind of got mixed up in editing, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. But I also like how we basically got his shopping list. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> there's a mask missing, some rope, a couple knives. A couple knives, <laughs> yeah. The one. <laughs> yeah, like, use. like they went through the entire store and figured out those were the only items that were missing. Yeah. It, they did an inventory. Yeah. Like, oh, here's the inventory checklist. Talk what, of, oh, there's five knives missing because there were six yesterday. Yeah. Talk <laughs> about like really detailing it out. Um, I also love how the sheriff. Yeah. You know, they're like, they're smoking weed mm-hmm. on the way in there. And she's like, oh, shit, it's my dad. I'm like, then don't stop. Yeah. And then she had to stop, and then like he's not gonna smell that. Like, you know, like it, it made no sense. Oh shit, it's my dad. I'm like, wait, when you said that, you were like five blocks away. Yeah, <laughs> you could have diverted down another road. Didn't even have to see your dad. Just kept going. Uh, that's funny stuff. And then I love the the scene where she bumps into the sheriff later because that mm-hmm. she like sees she thought she saw Jason and some hedge mate. I guess I'm backing up. A little bit in the movie, but oh, you're yeah, you're talking about the. the she's jump. just walking back. This is when she's still going to the house, and she yeah. just saw him, you know, peeping from behind the bush, uh, you know, doing what he does, yeah. and and she's like backing up, and it's like that jump scare moment where like, oh, it's the sheriff, you know, yeah. like, you know, like, and then he has this creepy ass look on his face, yeah. and just walking away, like, how do I get in those pantyhose? And then he <laughs> says, you know, what does he say? It's Halloween. I guess everybody deserves at least one good scare or yeah. something like that. And I'm like, well, that's kind of sinister to say. Okay. Thank you, sheriff. Thanks, creepy sheriff dad. So then, then we'll go back forward to uh, the, the other time we meet the sheriff at the hardware store. Mm-hmm. The kids drive away, then in here... And then comes walking across the street, Dr. Loomis. He's mm-hmm. like, I need to speak with you, Sheriff. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important. Ten minutes. I'll wait here. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally waits there with yeah. his back turned just so we can yeah. get the establishing shot of Michael driving away. Yeah. And the painfully obvious car that was stolen. Yeah. Like, what I don't understand is this whole movie, Loomis did not once say, hey, he got away in this car... The license plate number of this car is yeah da 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 da. It's this color da 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 da. No. <laughs> he was too busy trying to drive home the point that this 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 guy is evil. Yeah, uh, he's not human. He's not human. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's nothing behind those eyes. I'm just like, <laughs> for you being the smart doctor that you are, you've missed a lot of normal things that people would do mm-hmm. to uh you know maybe stop the killing rate in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing I love is, uh, love about this movie is like, and it ties in with two as well. And I love how they kept the world together. There was many jokes, uh, at least two or three jokes where, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character was like, there, there was a dance and she's like, well, I don't know. I'd like to go with Ben Tramer maybe. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, get ready for the dance. You're going with Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer is the kid in the second movie that dies by getting pinned between a cop car and an ambulance and exploding to a ball of flames. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they thought he was Michael. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's the other thing I don't get. I was like, mm-hmm. so in this universe, there was a fad of white Shatner masks <laughs> for Halloween. That's what was going on. That yeah. and a jumpsuit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I guess just yeah. Michael knew. It's, it's just like, Michael it's, wanted to fit in with the uh, style of the time, so it all just happened by chance too. Mm-hmm. He gets that mask and he's like, "Oh, well, I don't have to paint this. That's great." And then he's like, "All I need now is a jumpsuit." And then here's like the the guy driving the car repair thing. It's like, "Oh, fucking perfect, man!" <laughs> it's like not only am I gonna be, I'm gonna hide my identity, and I'm gonna be fucking styling at the same time. This couldn't have gone any better for me. 
I've got this giant station wagon with the crate uh, with the the mesh on the back to keep <laughs> to keep the loonies from being able to get yeah, to the people yeah. driving. That's not suspicious in the no, least. No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. So, uh, so okay. So now we're kind of building up. Okay, we got them at they're at the they're babysitting now. First yeah. of all, where are all the adults? The, all, there are no adults. <laughs> they're out doing adult Halloween things. I guess, seriously. Like, None of them are around. They're all babysitting. Yeah. Pretty much. The adults are gone so that all the kids that normally celebrate Halloween can be ba- babysat and, and babysitting. And, and like, I know it's, it, I don't think it was meant to be this way, but the, the, the Linda and Bob. Yeah. They basically just show up. Bob looks 30 in this They just way. basically show up where Annie is supposedly babysitting. And they're just like, where's she at? Oh, well, let's just have sex in the parents' bedroom. It's just bone. <laughs> right, Bob? It's just, it's just bone in their room. Oh, yeah. Bob. Oh, Bob. And then they get done. It's like, hey, Bob, get me a beer. It's like, I thought you were going to get me a beer. It's like, well, I can't do that, silly. I don't want to die first. <laughs> Which leads to the most hilarious scene in the whole thing, I I feel. Oh, uh, I know where you're going with Because he kills Bob. Yep. And then he's like, well, since I'm wearing this costume, I better wear another costume. <laughs> <laughs> so he puts a bed sheet over his he head. takes Bob's glasses. Cuts eye holes, puts Bob's glasses on, and he's like, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll fool her. And it does. <laughs> Jason's got a great sense of humor. Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael. My, Jason Michael has a great sense of humor. I keep calling him Jason. I don't know. Maybe you really want to do a Friday the 13th one. <laughs> Michael has a great sense of humor. He goes obviously. up, and the, I can't, and the sky is obviously fools her. She's like, here's my titties. And he's just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> basically. Well, if you really want to psychoanalyze this scene, this is where I go with it. Do, do we okay? have to? <laughs> he's reenacting killing his sister. He puts on a kitty type costume, <sighs> and he goes up to the bedroom and sees her naked and kills her. Yeah. So, so, for, so he's just reenacting it, except now he's not a creepy little clown. Now he's just, uh, you know, stereotypical boo Halloween ghost. He's like, shit don't change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shit don't change. <laughs> Dumb bitches constantly getting their tits out. This <laughs> is like, I don't even try. <laughs> like what you see? <laughs> so he's killing her. And then at, yeah. the, at just at that moment, she calls Lori. So... He's strangling her. And you know, when your airways are being choked, you can get out, ah! Yeah, yeah, ah! yeah. Like that. He's like, oh, now your favorite, your famous screams, huh, Annie? Oh. <laughs> Fuck you. And he's like, hangs up. <laughs> so he kills her. Then she put up such a fight, too, really. She did. Now, yeah. that was after he kills Linda, though. No, this was Linda. Annie had already died earlier in the car. We, we skipped past that. Oh, did I? Okay. Yeah. She was the first one of the, the, uh, Lori's friends that were like, why are they friends? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she dies in the car. She was her in the car. And really, Mike stabbed her. I yeah, guess. it was kind of a really stupid death. Yeah, it was pretty much a death you don't really see. <laughs> That's the one thing I will give. The deaths in this movie are kind of lame. None of them have blood, really. No, which still is one of the accomplishments of this movie, I feel like. Yeah. They got away without really a whole lot of blood being shown. Yeah. One of the coolest kills, I think, is I, it was Bob when he stabs him into the oh, wall. Oh, he holds him up and then he like pins him yeah. against the wall, and he's just sitting there like looking at it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of wondering how the hell you did that too. <laughs> Some people are saying, like, I, I kind of read a little bit of that too. People who like to psychoanalyze everything, well, like got him um, between rib cages, and was it. like, well, that's how they pinned him up. But it was like pinning, like when you like when kids like collect bugs and stuff and they pin them down oh, so to he's the like mat. Admiring so he's it. admiring that he caught this bug. Yeah. Bob's a bug, apparently. And, uh... <laughs> Bob the bug. <laughs> and, but yeah, he would really have had to, like, really been... I mean, obviously he's very strong, but he would have had to have, like, hit that just right. And, uh... Yeah. And Bob's just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> what if Bob didn't die? He's just like, I'm just gonna fake this. It hurts like hell, but I might make it if I just fake it. So... Then the other two are dead, so then we have, of course, Lori left. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when he goes in to kill her, it, it's probably the most, te- and, and it deserves to be, it's some of the most tense parts of the entire movie. Yeah. 
Because, you know, he gets a good stab at her in the shoulder and everything. Slashes her arm. Slashes her arm. Which I feel like he could have just got her right there. I feel like he was almost kind of teasing yeah. the kill. Because it's like it's not like she was running away. He just kind of came up and just went, shh. Yeah. Like, there's a there's a warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I gave a warning shot. It's like, don't make this so easy on me. Your friends were idiots. They made it way too easy on me. Yeah. So, and I also like to throw in there that as this whole thing's happening, Dr. Loomis is walking around outside. Mm. Because right before we go into the whole climactic part of Michael finally going after Lori, he tells the sheriff, I know he's going to be in this house. I'm going to wait around outside. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, why why don't you go in and get them the fuck out of the house? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I get you want to catch him hook, line, and sinker, but you could get them out. He's still going to go in there thinking they're there. Mm -hmm. You could have just been chilling on the couch with your gun, Mr. Loomis, like eating some popcorn and be like, gotcha, bitch. Bam! (laughs) But, yeah, so I just... That's one thing that adds to this movie for me that makes it even more hilarious during this tense scene of, like, he's slashing at her, she's hiding kids in rooms, they're running upstairs, running downstairs. You know, she, um, I forget what she did to put him down the first time. She stabbed him. She well, got the they, they got away. away the first time, yeah. got him upstairs, put the kids in a room, then she hid in the closet. Oh, the, before that was, they were down, she was downstairs. Yeah. And... She had just been chased by him across to the house, and she, like, wakes up the kids to to let her in, right. right? And then, like, he attacks her. He's, like, he came in through the window. Yeah. And he's there, and then he tries to stab her on the couch, and they struggle, and then he, she stabs him. And then just kind of just goes, well, he's dead now. That's Didn't right. She assumes she, she killed him. She assumes she killed him. So she goes upstairs, and... Says that she killed the boogeyman, and the and Tommy goes, "You can't kill the boogeyman, because you know he's right over there. He's come upstairs right now." Yeah, he's just like, and then that's, he's like, he's like slowly <laughs> walking upstairs. He's like, "I'm a coming, <laughs> slow and steady." When and, the and she's like, you know, get get in. She gets them locked into the room. She goes in and hides in the closet, and and then that's when uh, he comes in and does the you know the closet, and that's when she gets him with the wire hanger to the eye. Yeah, which is like that's, that's right. That's pretty impressive. He takes a lot of damage to his eyes in the film series. Pretty impressive that she was that accurate with a wire hanger to oh, get him right in the just eye. Just wait till you watch two. <laughs> she shoots both of his eyes out, not even aiming the gun properly. She's just like holding it down in her lap, just like okay, yeah. like like when you go to the park and you're playing like that game where you're supposed to fill the clown's mouth with water out of the <laughs> gun, you're just like aiming it up in an arc. She's just like bam, bam. And it's just like <laughs> shit. <laughs> So, so yeah, she stabs him in the eye. He he he's like, oh, I'm, drops his. He's like, oh, he, he plays hurts, dead drops again. Drops his knife. He plays dead again. No, no, no. She he drops his knife. Oh, that's then right. She yeah. stabs him again. She stabs him again. Yeah. Then he falls down. And he's like, I'm just gonna take a nap. Obviously, yeah. I gotta Laying, think like, about what, perfectly. Yeah. He's like, I gotta think about what I'm doing. These tactics aren't working. Apparently, I yeah. gotta stop bringing weapons in here because that they always get put in me. So he's he's taking a break. She sends the kids across the street to go call for to go call for help, and that's when Doctor Loomis finally decides, "Okay, now I gotta help." <laughs> yeah. So he like shows up right as uh, the uh, kids Michael yeah. Michael's doing his best uh, Undertaker Kane impression, where he just sits straight up. Yeah, and you're like, "Of course he's not dead. Stop thinking he's dead when he's obviously not dead yet." Yeah, I mean, <sighs> so that's what I love. The kids are running out across the street. Yeah, that's when he noticed something Screaming. might be wrong. Screaming. Yeah. Screaming. Yeah. He doesn't. He notices then, not yeah. when Lori's running across the street screaming, mm-hmm. pounding on the door. Let me in. He's after me. He's after me. And he's just like sitting in his car. He's like, God damn, I love tacos. How about <laughs> the scene where she goes to the neighbor and is knocking on the door for them to let her in, and they like look out the window and they go, I'm not letting her in. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm wow. Like, what? A lot of problems in Haddonfield <laughs> with your neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a lot of crime in Haddonfield? <laughs> So, so yeah, so, so now, you know, uh, Michael, uh, I want to do it again. Uh, he's like, you know, come after her and then Luma shows up and bang, 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 bang. And he shoots him first. Yeah. He, he doubles back into the room. Yeah. He just comes around the corner and of course he's (gasps) standing there just breathing heavy. (laughs) Shoots him five more times. Yeah. He falls off the bat. Now this is the other thing. Yeah. 
when you watch that shot of him falling off the banister, he's actually like his steps. He's like at the same height of the banister. It's like he's floating in midair and then falls <laughs> off the. Because I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm like, they put steps there for this actor to walk backwards up mm -hmm. and then fall. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's just a little nitpicky thing. But so he falls off the banister. Then we get some of the corniest shit. Mm -hmm. I feel because you have Jamie Lee Curtis sitting there crying. It's mm -hmm. like, is that the boogeyman? Yeah. I'm like, what? what? Yeah. I, I, I'm a, as a matter of fact, it wants. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then his body disappears from the, the yeah, envelope. It's just not there. And then the music hits. Yep. I think it's funny though. If you watch, if you watch Halloween two right after you watch one, which I highly recommend doing. Oh, I, I think you have to. <laughs> I almost feel Halloween two is superior to one. I don't know. I, I also just... feel like it was meant to be one long thing because of how quickly it, yeah. it takes up right after the first. Literally, one. There's no time in between. They recap the first one in two, and I think yeah. it's really funny because when they show the shots of like him gone after he falls, mm -hmm. in the first one it's just the ground. There's nothing. In two, they decide to put the hilarious like cartoon impression of his entire body like in the grass yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it picks up directly from there it's like a pov shot of him in the alleyways and you see loomis like run into a cop car it's like i shot him six times in the heart it's not human <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's the entire movie and yep. you know i watch it every year at halloween because it's it's i don't know if it's one of my favorites but it's one of those staples to me mm-hmm it's not the. It's not a perfect slasher film. I don't know if there is a perfect slasher film. In all honesty, like no, they're, they're, they're all flawed. There are yeah. ones that are up there, but there's nothing to them that is like, yeah, this is perfect in every way, mm -hmm. shape, or form. But it it did a lot for horror because at that point, it was kind of tipping off around that time because there there yeah. were slashers here and there, but it was getting to the point where there wasn't anything new for general audiences to see. And this was something completely different. Sure. As far as horror went, at that time, we had just finished up pretty much the Hammer Horror Series Horror Cycle. You had a few things here and there here in, in the States, but really, horror movies in the States at this point, there really wasn't much. Yeah. Because um, right at the same time is when you had Jaws. And other than that, there really wasn't many major horror films in the States at this yeah. point. So, like, horror was kind of kind of dormant in a way um, until we got into the 80s when it exploded. Yeah. But, um, and, so, and that really helped, uh, this kind of helped usher that in. Yeah. And, it, you know, John Carpenter, he's credited for a lot of this. And, you know, <clears throat> I, well, I was doing some research, you know, and I was like, yeah, John Carpenter is pretty famous for horror movies. I'm like what all did he do? And I'm looking through his filmography of things he directed and wrote, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a lot of shit in here. Yeah, there really is. And, and like, he... Go some Mars. Obviously <laughs> hit a few out of the out of the ballpark, but there were a yeah. few that were kind of, eh. There were some that were abysmal. Like, yeah. it, and he did continue on, like, helping with the Halloween franchise, which I guess... Shows the decline of a guy who can get burnt out doing the mm -hmm. same thing over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And, you know, I would stick with this one. I would go to two. Three, as everybody knows, Was completely, really... completely went away from it because yeah. they were trying to do a different theme every season. Mm -hmm. And it just, people were like, where, where the fuck's Michael? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they didn't want to see that. And the and the the, the company's like, we 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 blew him up. <laughs> nothing much more we can do from there. Yeah. They're like, yeah, bring him back. Bring that bring that Loomis guy back. He's good too. Well, he was in that room. He blew up Michael. They're like, ah, bring him back. Put a little scar that looks like an ear on his face. Uh, perfect. Everybody's gonna love it. Yeah, because three's not a bad movie. It's just not. It's not what people want. It's not what people wanted. So I would go with one and two. Three is good in its own right. Four is actually really. I mean. Four is really when it kind of starts yeah. descending in the uh, roller coaster hill. There, it just meh. but and then at that point, from going on forward, H two O is the only one that's even possibly redeemable. But even that's kind of stretching it. H two O is the only one that actually kind of follows canon because yeah. you have Curse of Michael Myers, which brings in this weird cult fucking turn. Yep, where the uh, 
Order of the Thorn or whatever it was called, the Mark of the Thorn. And it's like, it's trying to explain why he even killed his sister in the first movie. And it's just like, so you're taking the mental disability part out of it. And you're just like, oh, it was a cult the whole time. This, this Mark right there gets passed around randomly to people. Mm -hmm. And that's why he did it. It wasn't that he had problems. (laughs) I was just like, stop. No. Yeah. Please, I beg of you. All I can say is that I am glad that John Carpenter made sure that this film did not go under its original title. Yeah. Uh, the Babysitter Murders. Yeah, The Babysitter Murders. Um, because we would not be talking about it today. Mm-mm. And Halloween's perfect. <laughs> it, it works, because all the murders were on Halloween night. Yeah. It works. Um, you know... I love this movie. Uh, I think, me personally, knowing the problems with it, though, I still give it like an 8.5 out of 10, in all honesty. I, it's it's solid to me. I watch it every year, like I said before. It, you know, it's just, it's great. It gets the, it, it, it traps that real feeling of the holiday in it, mm-hmm. in all essence. Like, it's dark, you know, there's leaves and shit blowing around. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that adds it into anybody, but it's like, it's it's got a gloomy factor. You know, they did a really, they did a really good job of making it feel like Halloween, even though this was like filmed in the summer, <laughs> in the summer in California. It wasn't even filmed in Illinois, uh, but they did like a really good job of yeah. making it feel like Halloween. Because I think, uh, yeah, you see some definite uh, California style foliage around. Yeah, there's some palm trees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those Haddonfield, Illinois palm trees. Yeah. <laughs> So I would give it an 8.5. What would you do? I would give it an 8. Right. I'm not a big slasher fan, so that's the only reason I'm not right there beside you. But as far as slasher films go, this is up there as I, I think it's one of the, the best. Well done. All right. Well, I guess that will end our review for Halloween. Uh, come back. And next time we're going to be doing Vampire. You can grab it off my shelf right over there. We can show people what oh. it looks like. Because it's spelled people, different. Some people call it vampire. Some people call, call it vampire. vampire. Yeah. Um, but it is a... Yeah. A French German production from 1932. Sound, but you wouldn't know it to watch it. Uh, fe- feature um, by uh, director Carl Dreyer. So yeah, we'll be checking Very good that stuff. Out. So check us back next time, guys. Thank you. See ya.